And my dad's a minister uh, of the gospel, and he, he's now in Africa. And just yesterday, I want to encourage you as an, as an encouragement. You know, God is the healer of your heart, and he's also the healer of your body. And um, this was so... I. I I, I thought, oh man, I'm just going to share this because this is so amazing what God does. If you're believing for a miracle, believe it. Let you, uh, may you be encouraged um, because, you know, what God is doing around the world, in our church, in Canada, in the nations, in Asia, in Africa, he can do the same. The spirit uh, of testimony is, is, um, is that he will do it again, and he can do the same for you. And I want to encourage your faith and build your faith up. Just yesterday, my uh, father, he's there in, ministering in Tanzania, and they were praying uh, for, for a little girl, and she had, and she had a, a lump on her forehead. And um, so they prayed, and the lump uh, disappeared. And, and my dad was like, my, my goodness, like, I, I got to check from, he, from this girl's mother, if, did, did she really have a lump? And uh, yeah, she did, and, uh, but no more. And um, one uh, lady started to dance because all of a sudden her, her pain was gone. And um, many women, uh, pain from, uh, from uh, the stomach, many women, had there in the service pains and pain in their stomachs, uh, very many, and, and they disappeared. Uh, um, a man was set free from, uh, uh, from uh, demonic spirits, uh, was set free, was delivered, and um, uh, it's just wonderful, wonderful stuff, you know. God is on the move. He is the healer of your soul and of your body. And by his stripes, we are healed. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So if you're believing, you know, for a miracle, um, you know, we'd love to pray for you today as well. Um, he is moving. God is the same, you know. You know and, and man, let the healings just increase. Come on. He's the same yesterday and today and forever, Amen. you know? And, and uh, they, they saw many things happen in the early church, and we want to see many things happen. And, and I just believe that, you know, the early church had great favor. It says great favor that the early church has. And I believe, you know, the favor of God is here in this house the favor of God is in this place, and I believe prophetically that it will increase, that greater things are, will take place in this place, in this house. Greater things are to come in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus is so good, full of grace, and full full of mercy and compassion and loving kindness in your, li uh, in your life. Amen. 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 Praise God. And uh, let's go to the word this morning. I want to share here and uh, then we'll, we'll pray and, and, and so on. It's so good to be in the house together, isn't it? This is, this is family. This is, this is our church. Praise God. Um, man, the word of God. Let, let, let's, let's just shortly, Lord, we just want to give this time as well. You know, it's, we worship God through music. We worship God through, through serving him. And we worship God through studying the word, looking at the word, exploring the word, meditating the word of God, and um, that service and worship unto the Lord. And so, Father, we thank you that we get to, in this way as well, worship you, Lord Jesus. Would you open your word? We pray for the spirit of revelation. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that we get to rely on you. Thank you for your presence. We love you, Holy Spirit. Open the word to us and to everyone and all hearers, in Jesus' name, be glorified. Amen. 
Galatians 5.25 is our main verse this morning. Galatians 5.25. Just going to put my phone here on silent. <clears throat> okay. If... Okay, it goes 5, so this is 5.25, and we're going to open it up a little bit more. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The NLT, New Living Translations, puts it this way. Same verse. Since we are living by the Spirit... Let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And one more um, translation, the NIV, I like how they put it in this one. It says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So here Paul is saying, since... We have received this amazing grace since we have believed in Jesus, since we believe in Jesus and his death and burial, since we have now believed that he is your substitute, since we now have believed that he is the forgiver of your sins, since we have now believed that he has washed away all your sins by his blood, since we have now come into this great uh, recognition and awareness and gift of salvation uh, through the death and burial of Jesus Christ, we are now born again. You are a new person in Christ Jesus, you have received a new identity all because of Jesus and not because of your own works. It is the gift of God. You have believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And when he was raised, you were raised together with him. And you received as a gift the Holy Spirit who testifies Witnesses with your own spirit that you are a child of God. You are his daughter. You are his son. You are his beloved one. You are now loved by him, accepted by him. He's for you. He is not against you. Since we have received this great uh, salvation, praise God. Then Paul says, therefore, then let us walk in the spirit, in step with the spirit. Let us then walk the talk. Let us bear fruits of the spirit. And, and so we have we received this life of God. Let's walk in the life of God, in step with the spirit of God. This word walk means actually to walk in an orderly manner. How many organizers here? How many of you guys like to be organized? Very organized, you know, just everything is planned and you're going in accordance with the plan and things are just super organized in your home. And, you know, it, it gives you, it calms you, doesn't it? It gives you peace and you know, okay, this is the thing, then it's the next thing. And I go from here to there. I'm going to go to the store. After the store, I'm going to do this errand. And, and uh, then I'm going to have this meeting. And it's very organized. And uh, I have some growth to do with that, <laughs> by, by the way. <laughs> so, so, but it's, it's kind of the same way with the spirit, what Paul is talking. Because this walking means walking in a military rank, this Greek word, um, it means um, that um, it's, it's this walking in line by rule, keep in step. step. It's this, uh, it means accordance to a particular pace. 
uh, to march in military rank and uh, to proceed in a row, go in order. That's what the Greek word means, to walk in step with the Spirit. So it, it's, this, it's this way of life and the way of peace um, that the Bible also talks about. But it's, it's this way of walking, you know, from one thing to another, from joy to peace, from peace to love, and from long-suffering to goodness, from, from goodness to faithfulness, from faithfulness to kindness, and, and from kindness to self-control, and from self-control to patience, and, and uh, from glory to glory, from, from one uh, uh, um, place to another, being conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. You're walking in step with the Spirit. You're walking, um, you, you know, you, you're, you, you want to walk in peace uh, first with Jesus and then with other people. You're, you want to walk with patience. You, you want to walk in forgiveness. You want to walk in unity. That's what it means to walk in the spirit, in step with the spirit of God. That's what Paul is saying. And a lot of it is to do with our mind. Those who live, this is Romans 8, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Right? But those who live according to the spirit of God set their mind on the things of the spirit. To be spiritually minded is life and is peace. And this word minded means that it's a thought in your mind. A thought which is in your mind, okay? So the mind is made up of many, many, I don't know how many millions of thoughts, thousands of thoughts per day, right? So it's a thought in the mind. And so the word of God says, we know how it says, be conformed by the renewing of your mind. And it says, be transformed, Ephesians, be transformed in the spirit of your mind. Mind. Paul talks a lot about mind, especially in the book of Philippians. Be um, renewed in the spirit, conformed in the spirit of your mind. So, so that's why it's, okay, so your mind is made up of thoughts. So huge to stay and meditate in the word of God. I want to encourage you. Stay in the word of God. Meditate in the word of God. Fill your thoughts with the thoughts of God, with the thoughts that are in the Bible. So it's, because it's minded, it's the thought in the mind. So walk in accordance with the thoughts of God in step with the spirit of God. So the thoughts of God are in your mind. And then you are, you are walking the talk, you are walking the talk when you are walking in obedience with those thoughts that are from the Bible. So, so it's this, fill it with your, the thoughts and walk according to those thoughts. And so you're bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Reckon. I love, I love Romans chapter 6. But just one verse from there. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So reckon, it, it's to do again, that word means to think that way. Consider yourself to be dead to sin. Consider yourself to be dead and, and, and consider your, your um, old nature to be dead because that's what Jesus did on the cross for you. He buried your old nature and he resurrected, um, you know, to a newness of life and you in him. So consider yourself to be dead, indeed to sin, okay, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, when we look at Galatians 5, what we talked about 
walk, you know, in the, walk in the spirit. If you live in the spirit, then therefore walk in the spirit. So when we look at the context, very interesting. When we look at the context of this, um, it, it says, you know, I'm just going to read from verse 16. This is Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. Um, I'm just going to read a few parts there to, to give a bit of a context. I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And... And um, the Bible talks about being led. Those who are, by the way, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Okay? So we are carried, this word leading means to be carried by him. So, so everybody who, who it's, it's again being led with the Spirit of God, with those thoughts that he puts in your mind from the Word of God. And so being led. Um, but anyway, it says then, um, now the works of flesh are evident, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of, outbursts of wrath, selfish, selfish ambitions, dissen, dissensions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, and then it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Now, watch what Paul says before he says all this. In verse 14. And watch what Paul says after he says all this. Okay, so the immediate context of this, um, of this uh, passage. Watch verse 14, if you guys have your Bibles or if it comes up there, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, be aware lest you be consumed by one another. So he says this before he's bringing the importance of walking in the spirit. And then he's talking about, you know, walking in the spirit in the fruit of the love, joy, peace, long suffering. And then at the end, when he says this, let us also walk in the spirit. He finishes off this passage by saying, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So in other words, Paul is saying, walk in unity. Walk in the spirit so you may walk in unity of the spirit. That's why it's so important to walk in the spirit. In Ephesians, Paul talks about the importance of the spirit of unity and unity in the church. In Philippians, he's talking about the same thing. Then he's talking about in the, in the book of Galatians. Paul talks a lot about the importance of unity. Because when we walk in the spirit, we are walking in unity. When we are not walking in unity as a church in the body of Christ, I'm talking about you know the, the general body of Christ, then we are not walking in spirit. So he's saying in Ephesians 4, Paul is saying, in chapter 1, Ephesians 4, 
He's saying, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy. Again, walk. Worthy of the Lord, or, or worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, enduring, enduring the, to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Paul is describing unity as one, as oneness. Remember that Jews and Gentiles were um, having a lot of conflicts. Okay, they were against each other. And they had conflicts over circumcision and legalism and so on. And, you know, a Jew would not enter a Gentile home and, you know, the Gentiles, they really didn't like the Jews and they, the Gentiles did not like at all their, their um, legalism and the practices, practices of legalism and ceremonial laws and its requirements of purity and so on. They were against each other. Um, so Paul is giving here an answer and, and what he's saying here is that the answer to unity is the fact that we are all in Christ and all of us are members of one body in Christ. And so God has now reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, okay? And then he has reconciled us together. Isn't that beautiful? The body of Christ, he has reconciled us together to be one. It says in Ephesians 2, 16, that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross and put the hostility to death by it. So Paul is saying be reconciled to Jesus. Be reconciled to Jesus. And so, so when we are reconciled to Jesus Christ and when this is okay, this is okay. When, when things with God are good, then this can be good. So he's pointing to Jesus that Jesus is the reconciler. He is the one who, who um, uh, gives, gives you peace. He's the one who reconciles and, um, and he's the one who brings the body together. Because when the body is together in the spirit of the bond of peace and unity, man, I'm telling you, it's so powerful. Because that's how God has planned it and purposed it to be. And when every member are doing and working in its function and calling, the body grows and is being edified. And so it's, it's so powerful. And I just wanted to bring this out because God is doing something great. And so, so when, he's, when he's growing and things are growing, um, it's so important that the body of Christ, the more, even more so, walks in unity. Because when the body of Christ walks in spirit, it walks in unity, and when it walks in unity, it is growing. The body of Christ is growing, and this we see here, it's interesting, how, how um, Paul puts these things together and he's saying 
very interestingly here that um, before he's, he's reading this, that, you know, um, therefore, you know, walk worthy of the Lord. Before this, um, no, af right after this, he's talking about the spiritual gifts and the body of Christ. So first he's saying, you know, walk in this lowliness and gentleness. And then he's saying, in this context, and he himself gave, gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the, me to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Okay? That we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by trigger of men in the cunning of craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love so, so he's, Paul, Paul is saying, walking unity. And when we're walking in unity, this is what is happening. The body is being edified. How, how great is that? How beautiful is that? And, um, and Paul talks about the importance again in Philippians. Only let your conduct... This is chapter 1 and verse 27. He's saying, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast, again, in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Therefore, if there's any consolation, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit. So the fellowship of the spirit is in the midst of unity. If there's any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being, again, like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of, this is so beautiful, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Okay? And then he's giving the example of how Christ humbled himself and became like one of us. Took on the, the form of humanity. And it says, let this mind be in you, which you also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. So, so it's this attitude of unity, an attitude of humility that brings about, um, and yeah, it brings about unity and when we are walking in unity, we are walking in the spirit. And, and his church is being built. So Paul is very, very clearly, again, connecting the body and the importance of the body of Christ being in unity and walking in spirit. We can see this also in Romans 12, which I'm not going to go. Matt, if you want to come back, back here and... Um, He's building his church. He's building his church. The Lord is building his church. He is the cornerstone. He himself is the rock.
Jesus was asking Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are the son of God. You are the son of God. You are the Christ, Jesus. And, um, and Jesus answers and says, no flesh or blood has revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And also I say that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, come on. Yeah, 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 come on. Church is moving forward. The gates of Hades shall not prevail. He's doing something great. And I will give you, you, the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. It's all about Christ and his church. Therefore, walk in the spirit and in the spirit of unity so the church can be built up so he can prepare his church. In the New Testament, it talks about four times about the day of the coming of the Lord. Three times in the book of Philippians. And he's talking about the importance of having the same mind, the importance of going towards the same direction, his body moving towards the same goal, same direction, walking in the spirit of unity, hand by hand, hand in hand. Praise God, praise God. And that's what it means to walk in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Hank, would you come up here and just pray a blessing over um, Father's blessing over us. Hank serves as an elder, as one of our elders. And uh, let's just stand up and lift our hearts to the Lord. We're gonna open up the altars here. If you need prayer for anything that's on your heart, we'd love to pray for you. We have the prayer um, team coming up as well. And um, after Hank has prayed, we're gonna open up the altars. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for living waters. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are moving among our midst. Thank you, Jesus, what you're doing in our church. Thank you for what uh, you're doing in the city. Jesus Christ, help us to walk in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, we say, help us to be aware of your presence. Help us to be aware of the Spirit of God. Jesus, we say, help us to walk in such close unity and in the Spirit of unity for your sake, Jesus Christ, and for the sake of your body, so that your body will be edified and so that you're the body of Christ can mature in you, Jesus Christ. Thank you that you are building your church. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are bringing uh, things together. You are putting puzzles together, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you built our church. We pray, God, that you built the churches of this city, the churches of our communities, the churches in this province and even in this nation, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are the foundation. And Lord, you are building your church. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, we commit ourselves again to you. Be the Lord of our lives, the King of our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, and be our very, very best friend. Lord, we really want to thank you for this word that you have poured on Yarko's heart this morning, Lord. 
We ask for your presence just to flow in this place in a mighty way, that there be rivers of living water flowing out of this place, like you had shown me years ago, Lord, that these rivers will be flowing from this place, through this place, into the city, into the dark areas, Lord, to take away all of that nonsense that is affecting our lives nowadays, Lord, that the media is pushing on us, Lord. But we ask for your blessings to flow into our lives. The word that uh, was spoken this morning, that it would become live in our hearts, Lord. That we would become the living vessels that you have created us to be, Lord. Let it come, Lord, in a greater way. Let it affect our lives. Let it affect the neighborhood. Let it affect the city. And let it affect the province and into the ends of the earth, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your blessings this morning, Lord. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence, living waters, living waters here today, living waters this morning, the waters of your goodness, <laughs> the waters of your grace, the waters of your unconditional love and mercy and kindness in our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We receive it. Healing waters, healing waters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus' name.